Welcome to the show, everyone. Today we have a special guest, Alexa Fisher. Alexa is the creator of Wish Beads, and this product got into my hands, I think, either around my birthday or maybe even Christmas by a very special friend, and I was quickly turned on to it, and it worked. Uh, you know how we talk Yay. about law of attraction and manifestation. We're going to talk a lot today about uh, Alexa's journey. And again, if you heard in the beginning, you heard her bio and, and all the things that she's done. But we, I want to start with, again, that backstory. So first of all, Alexa, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Let's talk about how Wish Beads was born. Take us back. <laughs> well, I, you may have heard other entrepreneurs say that they had the proverbial download in the shower, but that is precisely what happened to me. I think I've always been in the business of uh, people it's studying people in my career as an actress, teaching people how to have confidence uh, as a creator and course creator and speaker. And, and that primed me, I believe, for the moment when I was had absolutely no intention of creating a physical product, let alone a, a jewelry line. Um, and yet I heard so distinctly the name Wish Beads. I saw a product where you could write and wear your wishes to remind you to stay proactive towards what you deeply desire. And even though my personality is definitely one that's always embraced manifestation, I'm also like a wildly practical person. So when I had that moment, I very quickly said to myself like, what? Like the name Wish Beads is going to be available like as a trademark or a web address. And I so immediately that skepticism like reared its voice. But of course, I was curious and I thought that is kind of a cool idea. And the minute my shower ended, I grabbed a towel, ran to my computer and I was like, um, I'm just going to check. And there it was totally available, the most obvious name in the world. And for me, that was a sign. I thought, OK, I not only heard this so clearly when I was not looking, but now that it's available, that's basically a high five from the universe telling me to go do this thing. So that was the that was the origin story. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your manifestation, law of attraction practices prior to starting this company. Mm. Well, I think because of my background as an actress, I really have been aware of um I guess, you know, the human condition, like the energy of being alive and the energy of having an intention, which is what great acting is. A character has a goal, then they have obstacles that usually creates the drama. And then as a teacher, I really went a little bit further and I thought, well, what is it with everyday people? And I found that the more that I focused on energy and more specifically as it relates to the law of attraction, that the mindset that you have attracts more of the same. It becomes a fuel, a direction for your life. So whether you're overcoming your nervousness uh, about public speaking, when you start to build those muscles of confidence, suddenly you change completely the way that you think about yourself, the way you think about opportunities, um, and you have that fuel to take you forward. So when I learned of the law of attraction, and I came about it many different ways. I'm a follower of Abraham Hicks and you know, interested in that. And I saw the film, The Secret, and I'm a, a longtime meditator. These were all activities and interests that really became a part of my life and were integrated into my teaching. And when the idea of wish beads came, I thought, wow, this is intention and action. And not just, you know, a general wor word like gratitude or abundance, but really an invitation to get very, very specific about what you wanted. And that has worked for me in my life. And I was ready to bring a new way of manifestation into the world, both through my jewelry and through uh, wish work, which is the book and the 21 day journey after you create your wish. So I'll show everybody, if you're uh, listening to this on the podcast, we are doing this on video and we're doing it on video for the very fact that I wanted to share the two wish bead products that I have. So the gift that was given to me was this one. And again, I, uh, so with the wish beads, you make a wish and she provides you with the little papers that you can roll up and put in here in this little um, capsule in within the, the bracelet. And the two wishes that I put in here have both come true. So yes. I, oh, I want to hear about that. <laughs> uh, uh, well, okay. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. And then I bought uh, my 
my mastermind group as a present, I bought them this one. And so we did a little ritual when we had our first live event in Orlando in March, where everybody opened them at the same time, everybody put their wish in at the same time. And then I, and I did the same thing. I didn't open mine ahead of time because I wanted to be in the energy of, of the group and of the frequency that we were in and at the start of the weekend. So, and I, on your show, you had interviewed me on your podcast and we did a video and I showed you the bag of all the wish beads that I had. That's so awesome. Right. Cause I bought so many, uh, because it was like a perfect gift to start that intention setting for again, anything in business, even just in life. I mean, the things that I have in my wish beads are not necessarily business things. I mean, one is, but the other two are not. And, uh, and so I'll, I'll just, I'll share the story of, uh, of the first one. So this, now that I'm recalling, this one was given to me by Lisa Thomas, one of my dear friends, who's an energy healer. And she had met you at an event and liked you and your stuff. And so I got this bracelet and I filled it out as we were all sitting at dinner. It must've been, actually it might've been, um, a Jewish holiday. It might've been Hanukkah <laughs> actually, mm, nice. like a pre birth, a pre, uh, Christmas gift or something for me. And, and so I was filling it out and around that time, what was really important and what was on the top of my brain was buying a house and finding the perfect house. And I won't tell the whole story here. You guys are going to hear it if you haven't heard it already, because it's very detailed. Uh, and, but the details are important because it's a perfect unfolding of all the different contrasts and different points that have to happen for something to unfold. Like when you think something has gone wrong, rather than thinking it's gone wrong, you don't know how it's gone right yet because you haven't gotten to the end of the story. You're in the middle of the story. And so, you know, short, long story short, uh, I manifested our perfect house and so many parts and pieces of that. And I did it in a way that, you know, when I was working with my friend who was started out being my realtor, and I say started out because it ended up that we weren't going to work with a realtor. And so we didn't end up with him, but he's a dear friend, owner for 20 years. Uh, not necessarily on the same page with law of attraction stuff. Uh, you know, so when I started this process, I had a little bit of an obligation. I felt like I, I should use him because of where we were moving and, and, you know, long-term friends. And as we started the journey at some point, I, I can feel like I, I wanted more excitement. I wanted more. I, first of all, I'm not a shopper. I wanted <laughs> someone to be, I wanted someone to be more of a cheerleader. I wanted someone to ignore what was going on in the world. Like I was, because I didn't want that to taint this process of buying a house. And I didn't want to be put off from going inside of a house. And, and, uh, and I wanted someone who is a possible, who's a possibility thinker. And I said to him at one point, I said, I don't know. I love you, but I don't know if we should work together because I need someone who sees possibility even on, even amongst a situation where you logically can't make sense of how it's going to work out. And in that moment, I said, look, I'm the person who manifests the shit people tell me I can't get. <laughs> that's and my I, track record. <laughs> that's my track record. You tell me yes. I can't get it. And I yes. always get it. As I long as it. I believe I can get it. And I got it is the end of the story. Right. And, and when I got it after because months had passed, and I went, oh, my God, I did say that. Like I said that and I said it with intention and I said it with Assur assuredness that I was like, no, I can tell you every time in my life where someone says you can't get that. And then I get it. And I go, uh, yeah, watch me. It's almost like a little universal bait. Yeah. 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 Like if someone's going to say that yeah, to you, just to, pump, yeah, just to pump your juices up. So I got my house and, uh, Amazing. And so that, what that, what was in this bracelet. Uh, the other thing was abundance. I wasn't too specific about abundance. It was just sort of like money to help pay for the house. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely, my business is exploding and uh, it's like, the seams are busting through. Uh, it's so much so that I have to, I've started a certification to help have people come who want to do what I'm doing and I can teach them and then we can do it together because I'm not going to be able to serve the people who are wanting the help that they want. So, and, and that was already in the works, but the, how easily it's unfolding and how, how it's just kind of growing and growing and like just things are happening again at a level that I, I couldn't have predicted but are so perfectly divinely timed and in the right or at the right time, all the things that you think you want, you know, I, I chased money for years and I recognized in early on when I was chasing money that I was chasing money. Now I'm not chasing money. Now I, I have such good boundaries that it's coming to me in the, in the ways that I want it. And I, and I get to say no to a lot of stuff. Right. So I think that what I love about the product, besides the fact that it works um, <laughs> and that it helped me, it, it is that intention setting. It is that it's, sure. you know, and then you have really good quality. I want to talk about 
Um, so for those of you that are already very curious, because you've just heard my story and Alexa's story, mm -hmm. and you're already searching online, I'll go ahead and tell you that yes, we have a we have a a coupon code for you because you're a listener of my show. If you go to wishbeads.com, you can use the code JJ to get 15% off a, one of your wish beads. And again, don't stop at one. <laughs> but uh, um, <laughs> They look but great together stacked. They, they totally do. Look, look great stacked. So I want to talk about the quality of your product and why you chose. And, and I want everyone who's listening to think about this in a couple different ways. I want you to take a step back and observe the story that Alexa has about having the idea in the shower, like having the universal nudge to go look for it online, having it be available, and then the process that she had to go through to start a business that came as an idea that she acted on. I want you to like recognize that manifestation story. Now, at the same time, yes, I want you to get some wish beads, but I want you to put yourself in her position, in my position. I want you to reach a little further than you've maybe reached before. Uh, I want you to be more intentional, if possible, about some of the dreams and goals that you have. And so I want to know, Alexa, a little bit more about your story, about your business, and any any time along the starting it. So, okay, getting a website, no big deal, eleven ninety nine a month, done, you know, no commitment. Right. But then there, then there was the journey of the sourcing and the choosing and the designing and the distribution and all that kind of stuff. And so I want to hear along the way how it kind of unfolded for you. Great. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to share. Uh, I think that many of us, when we have a big idea, immediately we panic a little bit because you're thinking, oh my goodness, how on earth am I going to pull this off? In particular, I was very well-versed uh, because I had about a decade of experience creating online courses, for example. When I had never done it before, it was intimidating and daunting. But like anything, you can dig in, figure it out, test, try, do, put it out there, and after time, you become well-versed at it. But with a product, it was a whole different ball game. And so the first thing I did was to recognize that I was going to have to find my way through this. I was a busy entrepreneur, had a full, very productive company on my hands. I was a mom, full life. And so I opened up a door of possibility that kept space for exploration. And I would do it, what I would call, on the side. I would kind of look and think about and draw and you know, work with a friend who was a designer. And I noticed very quickly that I was making very slow progress because it was on the side, like a hobby. And then something really important happened to me and I would call it another sign. Uh, in 2016, I attended Oprah Winfrey's Super Soul Sessions and it was that live tour. This stop was at Royce Hall at UCLA and she had a number of amazing guests including Eckhart Tolle and Cheryl Strayed. And she also had India Ari on the stage who sang an acapella version of her song, I Am Light. There is some kind of energy in this song and in her as an artist because the minute she finished that song. My whole body was filled with energy. I had chills. I turned to my friend who I went to the uh, event with and I said, I have to do wish beads. Like I know that it came through me. I have an obligation to bring this idea out into the world. I knew it. And she was like, okay, settle down. I'm like, no, no, no. Like I got the call. Like I have to do this. And that really put me on the hook, you know, between myself and the universe, to be honest with you. And 30 days later, I launched a Kickstarter campaign, which raised $25,000 in 30 days. And it really was that jump start to very publicly putting myself out there with my idea. Now, from that moment on, I was like, that's where the rubber meets the road. And I began seeking support and questions and answers from people that I really respected. So there is this idea, especially if you're someone who's naturally an entrepreneur, a go-getter of this concept of like, I'm just going to do it myself and figure it out. But with this, there were so many things that I didn't know how to do. And I started putting it out there and calling people and asking advice, people who had very successful product-based companies. But one magical thing happened, which was when my Kickstarter campaign was up and running, actually, no, it, it had just closed. I got a tweet from a very, a lovely tweet that was like, this is the most amazing idea ever. And when can I buy it? Because as you know, with Kickstarter, it sort of closed and it was a, for a future date when it was going to be, um, products were going to be delivered to the backers. Anyway, I was like, um, who are you? How did you even find out about this? I didn't have a Kickstarter campaign that went viral or anything. 
But it turns out she was a very successful female entrepreneur. And I started noodling her, you know, figuring out, like researching her. And I found her on LinkedIn and I messaged her back. I introduced myself. I said, I appreciated your treat, tweet and I would love to connect. Lo and behold, she messages me back. We end up getting on a call and speaking for an hour and a half. And it was that one connection through one random tweet. I don't even still to this day, don't know how she found me that I ended up coming to one of her companies, their headquarters in Austin, Texas. I gave a wish circle for like 35 of her employees. And it was at that uh, experience that she introduced me to her manufacturer. She's acted as a mentor. She made some critical introductions. Um, and that's it. Like she sort of sits on my, you know, my board of directors, as you will. And, and I found that my journey has always been about remembering my intention, remembering the energy, my, my core mission in this company is to help millions of people awaken to their power of making their wishes come true. I, I look like a jewelry company, but I'm actually a wishing company and I'm a teaching company and, um, and then have that tenacity to just believe in yourself and the work that you do more than anybody else might believe in you, you know, like you spoke to about finding your house. And I could look at my past and what I had done in the past, you know, as an actress and as a teacher and running my own company that was like, I've done lots of hard things in the past and I did them, the things that seemed impossible and I did them. So that means I can do it again. And sure enough, you know, handful of years later, my, you know, my bracelets have been featured in uh, a good morning, good morning America and the view on TV shows at own. Uh, and it's, it's really taken on a life of its own, um, you know, through intention and, and hard work. Talk to me about the wish circles. Yeah. Well, the first step in the wish beads uh, journey is really an invitation to quiet your mind and visualize your life as if you're already living your wish. And, you know, yes, we can have intentions and we may know consciously what we wish for and we want to, we just write it and we put it in there. That's good too. But for people who maybe don't know what they want to wish for, or they just want to see it in vivid detail. Um, I know, you know, through your work, the law of attraction and certainly um, Abraham Hicks, the power in specificity can bring a, an inkling and bring it to technicolor detail. And I think that that had been such a powerful step in my own journey of manifestation and really imagining what something looks like that I wanted to offer that to people. And because my background is as a teacher, I create um, experiences called wish circles, which are virtual gatherings. They're hosted on Zoom. They have um, you know special guests that join me, but essentially I guide people through a visualization where you get to imagine you're living your wish and everything feels just right. And what is so surprising to people is that sometimes that vision can be very different than what they're consciously th think they're wishing for. And the purpose of these wish circles is twofold. One is to offer people a way to kind of create what I would call a pin in the map of where they want to go. That specificity makes it so much easier to reverse engineer it and figure out, well, how do I take all those steps to get there? You know, there's very practical things that you can do. But also, I think that there is so much of that experience and the information that you can glean from that experience to very specifically bring into your life right now. So even if you may have imagined yourself on the beaches of Hawaii and you're with your family and you're relaxing and you're laying on that warm sand with your face to the sun and you think about that, um, you can give yourself right now that experience by making space in your life right now to grab a blanket, find a little patch of nature, put your face up to the sky and take in that warmth. And by doing that, you start to realize your power to satisfy yourself, make space for yourself, and then take that energy and bring it back to your day-to-day -day life. It's really a new muscle that you're exercising. 
Well, it's the missing piece in things like vision boards and affirmations. And I did a show early on when I first started the podcast called Why Your Vision Board Isn't Working. And it's, again, like a treadmill that sits there. And if you don't get on it, and it isn't going to help you. So, <laughs> and to, so and too, too many people have pictures up and they do the vision board and they spend all this time and energy and they enjoy the process and then they forget about it. And it's something that can be activated. And what I love about the wish beads is that you, you know, because it's, it's on your body, it's on your person, you can constantly activate a memory you can anchor in through the visualization process, through the wish circles, through I, I've been doing all kinds of different activations and visualizations recently also uh, that come out of left field, out of nowhere, out of, out of the need. I was running a sales training and marketing for podcasters weekend and I could feel how everybody was a little tapped out in their head and I, it was time to integrate into their bodies. And so I did this visualization that had, had everyone in tears by the end of it, um, and it because it, it get brought to life what we're talking about and the goal and the vision. And just like you said, half the time people don't think like what they think they want is actually not what they want. You know, one of yeah. my most famous favorite law of attraction quotes is the only reason why you want what you want is because you think you'll feel better when you have it. And when you understand you can feel better now, and in fact, you have to feel better before you ever get the thing. And then when you feel better, you don't even need the thing, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. When we, when we can infuse and retrain our neurological system to, again, reach for a better picture in our mind, a better memory, a better creation, f focusing forward on what we do want, spending as much time in that future process, creation, visualization, uh, time and space versus in the worry of what uh, so many people think, well, I'm just like worry, like worry is, and the feeling of worry can be either worry or excitement. It just depends on the story you're telling yourself. The physical mm -hmm. feeling, the physical manifestation of worry could literally also be excitement. It's just that you're telling yourself that something's going to go bad versus you telling yourself something's going to go well. And that little pivot, that's so simple pivot. And so what I love about the physicality, like you talking about being practical, um, I am and I'm not, I'm, you sound more practical than me, uh, probably, but, um, <laughs> but you know, when you, when you do an activation, which is why, you know, I think I had led them through a wish circle, not knowing it was a wish circle, but leading them through like activating something inside of themselves to, to realize, to embody, to feel on, in your body the manifestation of said thing or the feelings that accompany it. Um, now, when you look down, there's this imprinted anchored experience with something yes. physical that can constantly remind me. And that's one of the reasons why I love the wish beads for that reason, because you can't help but know what's in it every time you look down. Yeah. And it, and if you have, if you've worked on the, the, purity of the, of the, what is you want? So for instance, you know, in law of attraction, as we know, just because you say you want a million dollars doesn't mean that when you think about it, it activates positive thoughts. It could activate negative thoughts True. if you're feeling the lack of that. But if we have aligned ourselves with the knowing, with the trust, with the possibility of having the thing, then every time I look down at my beads or I touch them or they roll around on my wrist, right? That, that activates that memory or that sensation that I created in a visualization or a wish circle. Do yeah. you do the wish circles? Is it, is it free? Is it something that yes. to be part of your community? Okay. Tell us a little Absolutely. bit more about how to, how to attend one. Absolutely. So if you go to wishbeats.com, you underneath wish work, which we can talk about in a moment, you'll see join a wish circle. And there you'll find information. Um, you can actually even find it on Instagram. I'm at wishbeats.official. And in my link, there is also a hyperlink that says join a wish circle. They're free. They're on Zoom. You do certainly don't need the jewelry to actually join one. You could even wear a rubber band on your wrist if you wanted to, if it connect to that very specific imagery. But the idea also is to experience the visualization, capture it in your own writing, in your own language, using present tense language. So it's not this thing that's happening in the future or a story about what you saw in your visualization in the past, but you're really almost energetically claiming it for your life right now. And again, as you said, JJ, it's that idea of giving yourself permission to feel the feelings and, and enjoy them right now because you deserve it. And when you 
creatively give yourself that experience and you can have that visual reminder in your wish beads jewelry. It's just bringing you back to alignment throughout your day because the world wants to trigger us so many different ways, like because the energy and the currency on social media and on regular media is, is really about fear, you know, for better or for worse. Uh, we have to reclaim our own personal power to change the narrative in our head, to decide what we're going to focus on day to day, and then use that positive energy to go after the life that you deserve, the life that you deserve to create for yourself. And uh, and I, I feel like <laughs> the reason why I was given this idea of wish beads is because of my commitment and my love of people and belief in people and um, as a possible solution to some of the energy that has been really permeate, permeating the planet, especially this last these last you know 16 months or whatever it's been. Um, it's time for us to remember that if we want to change the world, we, we really do in fact have to change ourselves. And that that change doesn't mean you know, completely changing everything about your life, but really understanding that change can happen today and change can happen with grace and ease and joy. And when you learn how to play the game of life and realize that it is within your power, you can take step by step by step. And that's actually how you create your wishes and dreams and make them come true, um, but also change your energy, which then will affect all the energy of everybody around you. So it's really a it's really a win win. You want to talk about wish work? Yes, yes. So I like you understood this phenomenon about the vision boards, and I also remember a moment very distinctly in the film The Secret, where a gentleman had like I think he was like visualizing a sports car or something, and he was laying on his lazy boy chair. And at the time, I was like, yeah, I kind of have to take issue with that because I, I think it's more than just imagining what you want and sitting in a lazy boy chair and expecting you know it to just show up in your driveway you actually need to do stuff and that's was my own experience in my life with building my various careers and so when i created wish beads i very quickly knew that there was more that i wanted to give people a framework and it's something i call wish work to inspire people that it does take some tangible effort on your part and by doing um, the work and uh, that they will see actually results and experience new things for themselves. So it won't be a theory. It's actually an experience. But the key is the experience. The work itself is really, really easy. 21 days of activities include things like noticing a song on the radio and are there particular lyrics that are related to your wish? Like, is there a sign there? Um, noticing smiles throughout the day. And how does that make you feel? There's so much happening around us, but we are so stuck in our heads that we just really don't notice. So the wish work gives you a framework to play a new game with life. And when you can take a little bit of effort, a teeny bit of effort, five minutes a day to notice something throughout the day and then reflect on it at night, you start to realize that there is more abundance and support around you than you know. And there's easier ways for you to shift your energy, attention, and action and just lean it closer towards your wish. So um, I even had a really powerful, well, I was, I always I do the wish work myself, by the way. And the other day I, re, I was uh, sharing a moment in my book and it was uh, the idea of remembering why you started remembering why you started. I can't remember what day it is. And that why you start something is actually the seed, right? So when you go back to the seed, the seed that contains everything, all the, the giant oak tree is actually contained in a tiny seed. It just takes time and nutrients to grow. But when I was thinking about wish beads and I was so, I mean, you know this as a business owner, you get really caught up in the day-to-day -day minutia and all the moving parts. But when I reread that, and I asked myself, remember why you started? I remembered a really critical aspect of wish beads that I haven't, that I had not yet put into, um, I hadn't activated yet. And it was this idea that alongside the idea of wish beads and the jewelry was another aspect of this wish. And it was to have over a million people wishing at once. A live event that is live streamed 
that is held in multiple cities around the world where we celebrate life with song and we harness this energy of a million people or more. And I knew that this was part of my original wish. And yet, because I was so busy running a jewelry company, a teaching company and courses and all the other things that I'm doing that I hadn't yet made space for that. And that reminder of that wish work was like, yeah, I need to make space for this. And so suddenly I started calling some people. I know I'm not gonna do this alone. This is a big wish. And, um, and I have a meeting scheduled on Saturday with some key people. And as soon as I started talking about it again and reaching out to my incredible network, things started to line up. And I thought, okay, here we go. And I feel the energy and excitement, not knowing how I will pull it off, but actually like you, JJ, totally sure. Oh yeah, we're going to pull this off. Yeah, this is meant to be. So anyway, that is how a little bit of how the wish work works. It's, a, it's an invitation to play in a whole new playground of life. And how is it distributed? We do Rampage of Appreciation in our group. I have people have partners. Um, you know, there are lots of different practices that I recommend to people. Is it something where it's like an online forum? Is it in a book? Is it in a workbook? Is it in a checklist? Like, how do you, how do you distribute this idea? Absolutely. Do, the idea of the wish work? Right. Like, so if someone was yeah. to say, well, I want to do it, what's next? Yeah, absolutely. So because I like to put lots of different resources out there, there's a number of different ways. Um, the first is I do have a book uh, name called Wish Work, and it's right here. Doop. And so, you, and it also functions as a journal. So of course you can get that, learn about the principles behind wish beads, the journey of how the company came to be and the 21 days of wish work plus space for a journal. I also have an app uh, in iTunes called wish beads, which includes both the visualization plus it has, um, 21 days of wish work and little audio messages to give you some thoughts, things to think about during the day from your friend, Alexa. Now all of your devices are going off right now. Um, but then you can also sign up at wishbeads.com slash yes, and get all of those same goodies, including the audio messages delivered straight to your inbox. So I'm, I'm quite committed to, you know, for people to go through the journey, uh, whether they have the jewelry or not, um, because that's really the teaching and the power behind wish beads. I love it. I uh, had a download. It's interesting because yours was more in real time, meaning like you had to act on it right now. I had, there was a product or company that I really loved their product and I was promoting it. I was using it. And, and at one of my live events, they would like sort of disappeared. I think the company actually like stopped. They like closed. And I remember saying before that, if they don't, like show up, if they're not sponsoring my next event and like provide so I can give you guys this product. If they don't sponsor my next event, I'm gonna make it myself. Well, I was kidding. And then like about a month later, I was walking, doing some exercise and I like stopped dead in my tracks and I went, oh my God, I'm gonna make this product. Now, <laughs> um, and, and that started this movement. I haven't made it and I don't even know that I will make it. But when I, when I got it downloaded, it was clear in that moment. And here's what happens, just sort of like, again, that understanding of like when you have this journey, the journey ebbs and flows and changes. And even though it may not be the thing that you finish, it had to take you to the next step where you learned this other thing that took you to the next level, right? So I was I re reached out to people and, and it just wasn't flowing at that time. I was really doing a lot of work trying to figure out, unlike you who, right, it kind of like it, the universe showed you this was the right thing at every step, pretty well, much. Well, not at every step. Not at every step? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, the majority of steps, but I love, you know, I, I do want to be honest, like it is a lot of work to figure out how to take something from your brain and put it out into the world and market it and doing all the things. So I don't want people to think about be like, oh, that's so easy for Alexa. She just, you know, made it happen. I, yes, I'm a very tenacious person, but it is, yeah, there were moments where I scratched my head and go, went, oh my gosh, what have I done? <laughs> So I'm and, human. <laughs> well, and I and I wouldn't expect it to be any other way because you have to learn what you have to learn. But there's a difference when eight out of ten things go well and eight out of ten things don't go well. Exactly. Right? Like when when your idea moves and you can't find X Y Z and you get a shut door every turn and you've tried twenty different things. Now now as I'm saying this, I'll go back and say that depending on the the 
the dedication you have to said product. Like I've heard how many stories about, uh, let's say Starbucks and I'm not necessarily a fan, but, um, Starbucks, you know, the, the creator of Starbucks got two, I think got 200 no's before he got a yes for an investor. Right. So it's again, but when you are so committed to the idea, your commitment to the idea well, just like I was to my house and any other thing I've ever wanted to do where people tell me I can't get it. And I'm like, yes, I can. And I do it. I mean, this podcast is one of those things. Do you know how many people tell, told me for years, you have to niche, JJ. You can't do all of it. And I'm like, well, I don't know how to not do all of it. So I can't niche because then it cuts off my arm and my leg and I can't walk if I only have one leg. So we're going to just do this the way JJ wants to do this and figure it out as I go. And the niche, the niches became clear as I allowed myself to take the journey. And again, and the universe and my <laughs> intuition spoke to me and told me and led me to the next thing. But, uh, but the advice of you have to niche and you have to choose one and you have to, you have to, you have to, I'm like, no, I don't. And I didn't. And here we are. And so when it came to this product, I thought for sure I was going to make it. I was on board. I'm like, okay, universe, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to like try. And I made a lot of connections and I met a lot of people and I learned a lot of stuff. So now when that next download comes in, I'm more prepared. I'm more prepared. Definitely. Right. So, you know, there is a, there is a journey to be had and it is a lot of work, but there's the two things you have to, to look at. One is how is the journey unfolding and are you getting more no's than yeses? Are you wavering on the strength of your impulse from the get-go, which you didn't? Uh, and that's important to remember because, again, at the end of the day, if you care, your passion, your purpose, your energy around it is really the most important thing. And my energy around said product wasn't. It was chasing money again. I'm like, well, I want to – this is something that I would like for myself. I'd like to give it to other people. And, but I was like lukewarm about whether or not, like, it wasn't my life's mission to make this product. Yeah. Right. So, so I, I just want to, I want to share that so that people who are thinking about starting a company or you have a company, you understand again, that we're not fighting up, fighting an uphill battle necessarily, but don't be, you know, don't, don't be naive and thinking that creating a product or having a business or being an entrepreneur is by any means easy. It's a right. journey. And yep. your commitment to the why, like you were talking about in the beginning, is really like one of the most important things. So I love how this this idea that you've had has blossomed into so many parts and pieces. And again, the through line isn't I'm a jewelry company. It wasn't I want to sell jewelry. It was I have an intention about helping people create a feeling through yes. the different things that I'm offering. And that's the intention, not necessarily the vehicle, of how to get the intention met. But I do want to talk about the vehicle of how to get the intention met, because I know you have different options of different stones. And one of the reasons why I chose the, the stone that I did was very, uh, very much about who it was going to and the energy that the actual crystal slash stone was going to activate. So can you talk a little bit about why you chose the materials that you chose? Because you, your line is, I mean, you have a lot of options, but you don't have like too many options. Like you could, this is yeah. a realm where you could be, you could have hundreds of options. And you <laughs> I know. So tell I us know. why you chose the very specific ones that you have. Yeah. I, you know, I think you get to create what you love. So when you are picking stones and you're looking at the meaning, so I have one collection is called the intention collection and there are semi-precious gem gemstones, really, really high quality. So you have the lapis lazuli, which is for love and protection. And you have the coral jade, which is for confidence and motivation, I believe. And, um, and all of those stones have different inherent qualities. And I would do these live events and I would have menus of like all the meanings and people would look at the menu and be like, um, I want all of those things, wealth and wisdom and health and happiness and all the things. And I said, you know, instead of making it overwhelming, you know, you can trust or, or look and see what are you drawn to and then discover the meaning within that. That's one way to do it. But then as the as the company was growing, I also started to explore other stones, things that sort of delighted me. And I, I found a, um, a local importer of really beautiful handmade African beads. And then I expanded to offer two different collections, one called the Seed Collection, and one is an African recycled glass collection. Um, these beads are made by, the, um, by a tribe in Ghana, Africa, 
And there was something about each of those collections that also spoke to me in alignment with wishing. The seed being, you know, your wishes actually are seeds. They contain everything within them that they are going to, um, to you're going to see to to you know grow to fruition. Um, so nurturing them, and they're 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 much more delicate looking. They're handmade as well. And um, and with the recycled glass, I also loved this idea that these this glass was all kinds of things before. It could have been wine bottles or soda bottles, and it's from all over the world. They're crushed, turned into dust. They're crafted and, and hand-fired. They're added unique colors, and each one of the beads is unique. And when I looked at that, I was like, just to your point, JJ, nothing is wasted. So even in our journey of becoming in the different aspects of our life, whether it's as a parent or a friend or a business owner or a student, all of those different facets make up who we are. So I love that. And then this, uh, during this pandemic, I actually created a new collection called Bling by Billy. Now that seems off the wall, but Billy is my mother. And during this pandemic, she had to stop her jet set life. Um, she's really an active, active woman. And she was kind of losing her mind. And I was like, okay, mom, like, let's, you know, I'm sure I can, you know, kind of give you something to do to help occupy all of your time. And so I had, um, from all of my like jewelry shows or you know, gem shows and all the things I had accumulated all these different stones that I weren't, wasn't using. I wasn't incorporating into any of my collections. And I was like, why don't you create bracelets for me? And we'll call it bling by Billy and they're one of a kind creations and you can do whatever you want. And it was like my way to include my mom and give her a creative outlet. Oh my goodness, she is so happy. She created a neon sign in her house called Bling by Billy, which then turned into the logo for Bling by Billy. She creates funny names for them. We post them on the website. There's only one of them at a time. Like there's just one. So if it's there, you buy it, it's gone forever. And so that's really been a really fun <laughs> collection as well. And um, and we have a children's collection because I think that, you know, if you can teach children how to wish in their own beautiful way when they're young, uh, you can plant those powerful seeds of inspiration. So we have a children's collection as well. I love that. And in case you're not watching on video, if you go to wishbeads.com, you can use the code JJ to get 15% off your order and order uh, all the things because there's all lots the of things. things, all the <laughs> things. And definitely sign up for the wish for the, uh, the wish circles and, and check out the book and the wish work. So there's been so much here, which is in exact alignment with all the things that we're teaching and all the things that we're doing here as a community to help people make strides into receiving more of what they want in every aspect of life, health, relationships, money, uh, connection, uh, self-esteem, the whole nine yards, like whatever people are looking for. And I think these are really great tools. They're additional tools. They're tangible tools that some people can more easily get behind. And so I definitely wanted to share your work with my community. So Alexa, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, JJ, thank you for having me. As I said before, when I met you, you are my kind of girl. So thank you for bringing all of your work to the world. It's just so, I'm so delighted that we connected. Me too. Everyone go to wishbeads.com, use JJ code for 15% off and take some pictures, put them on Instagram, tag me, tag Alexa. We want to see what you get and what you're doing. You don't have to share your wish. I'm I'm not going to share the wish of the other one until it comes true. So uh, <laughs> I only told I like you the other, it. I only told you the lapis lazuli one because it's come true. So now I feel like, <laughs> okay, I can, I can relax and let go. So again, um, everyone check out wishbeads.com and Alexa, thanks again. Thank you.